day 63. Uh, are you hopeful that there's enough time to do this? It's, it's been a long time in, in the works, and are you hopeful that this year will be the year for it? Well, um, I am hopeful. Uh, our, our priority is uh, a passed and funded budget. Everything else takes a distant backseat to that priority. Um, but there's been a lot of work. Um, we are progressing in labor and commerce. Um, we believe uh, once we're through that committee that things could move relatively quickly, but uh, it's a big bill and time's running short, so uh, it, it may be something on the agenda for next year, which would uh, break the hearts of a couple of hundred steering committee members, but that's just sort of how it works in this building. Sometimes it takes a while to get... Um, such significant concepts through, and although it's been four years, um, it, it may take uh, it may take a fifth. Becky, yeah. I'm not sure which of the co-chairs uh, this is best for, but the issue of education and the education funding it, is it anticipated that that's going to be um, treated separate from the rest of the operating budget? Or do you anticipate moving something forward when? You do move an operating budget forward from committee? Well, I, I would say that there's a high possibility that we could see it separate. Um, I don't know where the session is going. Education needs to be addressed. Uh, are we going to be bogged down here for 200 days or more, or are we going to um, get uh, the people's business done in a much more orderly fashion. That question I don't think can be answered today, but uh, I would say that uh, education is a high priority of the Senate. It, it always has been, and um, I don't believe we want to see uh, pink slips go out any more than anyone in this building. So there is that high possibility that it could be addressed um, earlier. We're waiting for the operating budget uh, from the other body. Um, we still have to have adequate time to go over what they propose and uh, get that through the uh, subcommittee process, through the finance committee. The caucus needs to be um, supportive of any product that comes out of that process, and then we have to uh, have enough time to go through the conference committee um, and that could be uh, quite lengthy it has been quite lengthy in the last uh, three years um, but hopefully education doesn't get caught in the crossfires if I might um, education is uh, a high priority as the co-chairman said Becky um, and we will do everything we can to uh, eliminate the possibility of pink slips this year. But what we do need to agree on that the co-chairman has spoken to multiple times in this uh, press conference is a funding source. And so the House, with the best of intentions, sent us over a bill that funds, educate, or funds transportation and Mount Edgecombe. And so we're left with trying to find a funding source. Uh, we have met with the co-chairs on multiple occasions to talk about use of the earnings. The House has set forth a 4.75% uh, of market value draw. The Senate has set forth for three years 5.25. There's a huge difference in those two numbers, and the number at 4.75% of market value draw, quite frankly, causes an uh, unintended draw from either the Constitutional Budget Reserve or the Earnings Reserve account. That is not that's not a set of rules that is going to work for Alaska right now, and so we need to come to the table and start talking about how we fund uh, Alaska state government, because another draw, um, it, just a flat-out draw from the Constitutional Budget Reserve will zero that account out, and uh, that's not the best way to move forward right now. We can use the earnings in a structured way with rules around that draw if we can come together. Back to the revenue question, James. You know, it all depends on what you want to count as revenue, right? Mm -hmm. um, the Senate has brought revenue to the table multiple times, and we took a bill to the floor that we knew didn't have support in respect for the other body. But look at the tax credits that we have taken out. We've eliminated some indirect expense. As, early as, la or as late as last year, we took a billion dollars off the North Slope. 
Now you can count that or not count that as revenue, but it increases the probability of future revenues for this state to the tune of $1 billion over 10 years. And so the Senate has acted responsibly. We're just not moving as quickly towards new revenue because quite frankly, at this time, we don't think we need it. But on top of that, we don't have the votes to provide it. The House has been very clear that that is a must have for them. And in respect for them, we took a bill to the floor that we knew would fail. It failed. Um, we are back to square one in trying to stand up the state's economy, and that is providing a structured draw on our earnings reserve to close the fiscal gap. And once that's done, we can evaluate other proposals as they are necessary. You know, I think, too, it's important to point out that the, uh, the House may or may not have the votes for an income tax or, or revenue as well. We have not seen a bill come from them. There is some insistence on their part that we uh, produce revenue bills, but uh, we've already demonstrated that the votes are not there for it, um, and if they want it, they should probably get it passed. Um, before we wrap up here, Aaron Granger, you're online. Do you have a question? Rich, do you have a question? I have, I have, I have a question. Uh, and this is basically, this is for you. Um, I think you, you kind of described this kind of white knuckle idea that when oil prices was in the, were in the 20s, mm -hmm. uh, it was time to be pretty worried. But I mean, uh, as, as Sarah Hoffman said, the, the revenue forecast still shows a two plus billion dollar deficit. Right. And shouldn't we still have white knuckles? Well, we have a plan. Uh, a plan is better than white knuckles. And uh, I think we have a plan with people that essentially, uh, in all three branches, agree on to some form or fashion. That's probably what we should pursue rather than another idea that, that uh, the people of the state of Alaska uh, don't agree on and the people in this building don't agree on. Uh, one other thing I want to say, too, that last week there was some uh, confusion about the, uh, the constitutional amendment going into the, uh, that was over in the House. And, um, there's, there's some pretty good reasons that you wouldn't want to pass a constitutional amendment, and I think that came out in the hearings that they had. You saw a great deal of pushback from the uh, permanent fund uh, board members and the executive director, and there was a resolution out encouraging us to get a structured draw in place. And I, and I think the, the takeaway from, you know, I'll congratulate the house, or the house on going down the road that needed to, we needed that information. And it came out in pretty glaring fashion that uh, a constitutional amendment probably isn't the best thing for the dividend because, number one, we just don't know the impacts of that. And we probably should put it in statute before we put it in the Constitution so we can test, our, test drive this thing before we buy it. Um, and that, that's probably a, a good enough reason right there, is it, it has to have a, a statutory test run. Senator Machiki? Yeah, just if I can, and I'm not answering over you, Mr. President, because you gave a good answer, but the reality of it is, if had we tried to immediately respond when we had a $4 billion budget deficit, um, we would have responded incorrectly. Sure. We, we were measured, we were careful, we walked each approach very carefully. This body uh, has a tendency to take some of the more jagged approaches and smooth them out, and that's what we've done. We've talked about preserving our savings, which is $65 billion plus. Okay. We've talked about, we, we demand that we preserve the ability to pay out a PFD by having a logical approach on withdrawing anything from the earnings reserve. Um, we're carefully looking at the CBR as the sponge in the future while we're still in this situation, so we've been very careful. But we, we have never overreacted, and we don't plan to begin that practice today. It's proven over time that that careful consideration and taking everything into account for stability, while looking at a wide range of probabilities, has delivered a more positive result, and that's where we are today. So we can try to respond for the most extreme, but what we're trying to put in place are things that, over the long term, will respond appropriately without a financially jagged um, policy. With that, we're done. Thanks, guys.